My name is René Piringer and today I want to talk about how to build software for mobile projects, also in mobile projects. I mean by building how to get from the source code to the version in the App Store. And a uh, package for the App Store can be quite complicated. It is not a trivial process because uh, metadata have to be valid like identifiers or code signing or some push notification certificates. So th this is not a trivial process and uh, it would be nice uh, if we can automate this whole stuff and uh, a goal would be that we have one, we press one button and we get from the source code to the, to the version in the app store. So um, I've I've uh, earned now some experience over the last few years and I've tried to achieve this and I want to share what I've learned and let's see how far I've come. So first I want to clarify what continuous integration mean and continuous delivery so that we are all on the same page. Uh, continuous integration ensures that we have a working code base. This, me this means if a developer commits something to the source repository, we want to validate that the, the code compiles and also that the uh, unit tests all work and if something is wrong, we want to get notified very fast, quickly. And the second term is continuous delivery. Uh, continuous delivery is a natural extension of continuous integration. And, okay, the slides doesn't fit. I hope you can see it from here. Okay, continuous delivery. Uh, we want to make, we want to ensure that we have a working our app that we can deliver, so that we have always in our development process an uh, app that we can theoretically uh, deliver to the app store and also to our testers. So first, let's focus on the build itself. And let's see what tools we get from Google and from uh, Apple, uh, how we can build our software. On the Android side, we have a, a very decent build tool with Gradle, but on iOS side, we only have some bunch of command line tools like, uh, like Xcode build. And, um, it's not the uh, really, really, let's see how, how Xcode build works. Um, when we want to build an application with Xcode build, we have a command with lots of lots of parameters. This is uh, actually uh, something that my build server uh, would execute in, in this way with uh, this much uh, parameters and uh, when we talk about build server, most of the times people use Jenkins with one of the most popular build servers. And um, when we want to build our iOS app on the build server, we can either use a shell command with this long Xcode command, or we can use a plugin like this iOS Xcode plugin that seems to be very popular because it has about 5,000 downloads each month, so we can fill out a same the, as nearly the same parameters as the Xcode build command and we get the build. But the question is, is this really a good approach? I had the problem with this approach that what happens if the build, the, the, the build on the build server fail? Normally, uh, you use an IDE and when you uh, hit run, it normally builds. So you have to, ha you have to try to verify this, the build that is running on the build server and try to reproduce it on your local machine or connect to the build server and try to reproduce, to reproduce the error there. Most of the times the errors are trivial, but sometimes it's a bit complicated. So in the end, what we want is 
a simple build tool with, with, with simple commands. It should, it should be simple commands and with as few parameters as possible. And uh, what I mean with this is if I want to build or run all my unit tests in my project, I just want to say something like build test and the application should compile and all the unit tests should be executed. This should, should, be, the, should be enough information to do this. Also, when I want to create a build that I want to deliver to my testers uh, or for in-house testing, I want, for example, say build hockey app and the, the application is built and distributed to hockey app and so that I can download this, uh, so that I can download this application. Also, uh, when I want to build an uh, application for the App Store, I want to say build App Store, and here I want to make sure that the version uh, is 101, so I want to override all the settings in the different files that I want to ensure that this is the proper version. Also, also what I want is I want a self-describing build. So I want that the build tells me what it can do so that I have at least a basic documentation what the build does. So this is what I want from a build. So let's take a, take a look at the tools we can use, uh, what, what are out there. The most popular tool for iOS, as far as I know, is Fastlane Tools, which is a bunch of Ruby scripts where you can build the app, you can deliver it to Apple, you can sign it and do m uh, much more. Also one, I think, newer tool, this Basel.io I found recently, this tool is from Google, is currently in alpha state, and you can build for several languages, uh, also for Android, iOS, and some other languages. And of course, with Android, we already have a, a good build tool with Gradle, and uh, for iOS, I also use Gradle, and I use the Gradle Xcode plugin, and this is a really great plugin. Uh, I must say that because this plugin is because I have created this plugin. Because uh, uh, a few years ago there was nothing out there, so I I put all the knowledge of how to build the stuff into this plugin. So here are some examples uh, that I use uh, for my projects. Uh, for example, for the self-describing build, I say. Cradle tasks, and it lists all the tasks that are available. Uh, uh, the list is much longer, so I have uh, only, uh, sh uh, sh only the bottom of the builds, but we see some things like uh, uh, Xcode build. So if I execute Cradle Xcode build, the application compiles. Or here are some examples I use on my build servers, for example. When I execute Cradle package release, I create a an, uh, an, uh, package that I can deploy on my internal test device. So it creates an uh, IPA with the, pro with, with the proper code sign and so on. And everything else, the whole configuration lies uh, in, the, in the build config file of Gradle. Also for the App Store, on my build server this looks like this. I say Gradle package App Store. And here I also pass some versions that I want to be hard set into in the application because if some developer, for example, modifies a config file, I want to overrule this. So one thing that I also want from my build uh, is that a build has as few requirements as possible. What I um, uh, build requirements are the stuff that I need to build. For example, on when I want to build an Android app, I have to install at least Java and the Android SDK, and maybe Gradle. When I want to build for iOS, I have to install uh, Xcode and maybe some other tools. But for example, if you have a library that you built in into your mobile applications, uh, you want, for example, uh, create an uh, AP documentation. So you have a tool like Doxygen or Apple Doc, or maybe you want to do some code coverage, or you have on iOS uh, third-party dependencies with CocoaPods. Uh, you have to install such tools. So, but I say 
try to have as few uh, requirements as possible. This, uh, this does not mean that you shouldn't use CocoaPods. Uh, it means that you should try that your build tool bootstraps these tools so that you don't have to install it manually on every machine uh, from the for the developers and also on the build servers. So if you, um, if you can't bootstrap this, it is, fi it is fine that you install it on the machine, but try to avoid it. Uh, in my case, my requirements are only for Android, Java, and the Android SDK, and for iOS, Xcode, and Java. I have said I use Gradle. Gradle can bootstrap itself. For, uh, uh, you can use the Gradle wrapper, uh, which adds a, a few files to your project, and Gradle downloads itself and installs itself. Also, I use for iOS CocoaPods, I also use uh, AppleDoc, I also use OsoLint for code coverage, and everything is bootstrapped. So I don't have to install it. It's installed automatically. So with this in mind, we have now a build tool, hopefully, or we want to try to have a build tool that, that does all the stuff, and we get some benefits uh, out of it. For example, when we go back, we have, we have the build on the build server that is broken. It is now, with a simple command, very easy to reproduce this issue on your local machine. Also, if something else broken on the build server and you want to do an App Store release build, you also can do it on your local machine because the command is very simple. You also have a, a, a minimum set of documentation because the documentation is within the build file. So you don't have to uh, uh, look up in a wiki or in a Word document that lies anywhere in your network. So you have a basic setup as a basic information in your build file itself. Also, when a developer joins a team, uh, the, the, the setup of the develop machine is relatively simple because you only have a few requirements. And uh, what else is a great benefit I found out is that you gets decoupled from your build server. Because with this, with this simple build commands, you, you can, for example, uh, easily add additional build nodes to your build server uh, because the setup is easy. Or you can easily switch your build server. If you are not happy with Jenkins, then you can switch to Bamboo or other build server. And what I also do, I have multiple build server. This means I don't have three instances of Jenkins. Uh, this means I have one in-house build server and I have some open source tools and components that are on GitHub and I also build it uh, on Travis CI. So I have of the on the one side Travis CI and also on the internal server. So that the projects gets, get built on two servers. I have it on Travis CI so that I get an, that this nice batch on on the GitHub page in the README that says that the build is okay. So this is with the build itself. Now to build server. Uh, here is an example of an application I had on the Jenkins. This application is, got, uh, is called GeoCorda, and I have configured three tasks. The first task is a continuous task which does normal continuous integration. It compiles and runs the unit test and sees that everything is fine. The second task is a hockey kit task, and this task builds the application for a hoc deployment so that, that, that uh, we, we can ship this, this uh, application to our, our customer for testing or also for internal testing. And the third is the real app store build. So I, when you execute this, you get the EPA that you can upload to Apple or the, for Android to the Play Store. And the question is, is this a good approach? I had the problem multiple times that the first two went well. And the tester said, OK, the application is fine. Please submit it to the App Store. Then I started this, this App Store t uh, job. and uh, suddenly, this App Store job did fail. So there, 
normally uh, minor issues, but maybe in, in, in this packaging I did some, something wrong with the bundler identifier or the, uh, for the code signing the certificate has expired and, s and something more. So the question is, what can we do about it? And I found build pipelines. What are build pipelines? Uh, build pipelines um, looks in the first, uh, uh, on the first page very similar to the jobs uh, that we have seen in Jenkins. I also have defined several jobs for the project. Here I have two jobs more, but I have the continuous job that does the continuous integration. I have a job to build for the App Store. I have one for the, t for the beta testers. Uh, and I have the ch uh, two jobs for submitting to the App Store or to the testers. The difference now is that these jobs are interconnected. So when I commit uh, the code into the my source repository or if I merge a pull request and uh, the repository gets updated, then the continuous build is automatically triggered and all the, the project is compiled and all the unit tests are executed. And if this step is successful, then automatically the build app store is triggered. And also with every commit, I get a version that I can deploy or upload to the Apple app store. In my case, this job does not only build the application, this job also validates if the, if the uh, IPA package is valid for, the, for submitting to the app store. App store. Validating means we have in the Apple world to upload the application, the application transporter. And with the application transporter, I can pick an EPA and upload it to Apple. And during this upload process, several checks are performed. Like, do I use private APIs? Is the bundle identifier correct? Is the version correct? And you can do the same stuff without the uploading. So it get, gets only validated. And this is here the case. So only if the app is valid, this bar gets green. And if this bar gets green, it automatically triggers a build for internal testing. So I always get with a commit, a app store build and a build for internal testing. This has the benefit, for example, um, if a new Xcode version um, comes out and you install it on a build node and it breaks the build because there are new Swift keywords or any, everything else, I already have a working build for the, for the App Store. And the last two parts are only for sub submitting the application. Here in HockeyKit, um, this is a manual, pa manual part, so when I press the play button, I deliver the last build to the hockey kit server where the customer or I, uh, uh, my testers can test the application. In the meantime, uh, you test the application. In the meantime, uh, some other developer uh, commits again and this pipeline is already triggered again. So therefore, if, uh, over the time you get multiple builds and, and for example, the testers say, okay, this version we've tested now, you can submit to the App Store, but we already have 10 other builds. So I can, I can go, I can trigger this, this, this App Store submit and can say, okay, I triggered this and I want, I want to give an option, I want to specify which version, version I want to deploy. For example, here is the build number 94. So I want here to submit the build number 94. I have 10 newer builds, but I know the build number 94 is the version that is working. So I just enter the proper version number and I pick this build from the, from the App Store build that is stored here. And then this build gets, gets uploaded to Apple and you just have to press the submit for review button and everything is fine. So let's take a look uh, in detail how this upload process, how the commands look like on the build server. Here in the upload job, 
I have three tasks. The first two tasks are that I fetch the artifacts from the, from the previous job. This means I fetch the EPR file from the App Store job so that I have it in this job and I also, in my case, fetch the bill file because I don't want to check out the whole project to get the bill file. Also, this has the benefit that if something changes in the bill file, then I, I get the version uh, of the build file th that was used when I created the App Store build. And the third command is just the upload task here. As I say, cradle upload App Store, a simple command which has two parameters. This is the username and the password for iTunes Connect. And that's it. That is this upload task. Also, uh, I want to show uh, this continuous task. This is, this is the compile and this is the, where I run the, the unit tests. And this task looks also very simple. Uh, uh, this job has only two tasks. Uh, first, I execute cradle simulate the create. The simulate the create command uh, makes sure that all the simulators I use for unit testing are cleaned up. Cleaned up in, in that way that I say, okay, I delete all the simulators, create all simulators from scratch. Therefore, I have no apps installed, no caches and so on. So I have a clean state before I execute the test. And the second command is cradle run and test, which compiles the app and, send, and then executes all the unit tests. So I also can execute this command as, as developer on my local machine and can uh, also verify that every unit test is working. This version number. Yes. Yes, you you can define in the you define in this task. You define what should be stored uh, for the particular build. You define this is this is called an artifact. You say yes, yes. You you say okay, I want to store this EPA and I want to store this build file, and this, it is stored as artifact. And and I I kept every every version there. Are uh, for example, for uh, uh, this particular build server, there is an there's a plugin that you clean up stuff afterwards if it uh, is expired and so on. Yeah, and also one um, thing that I, thing that I didn't mention, I also this version number is defined by the build server. So I this is set I set the first version number uh, manually. And this is the internal build number that is, that is increased. So with every build, this build number increases. And I, uh, I found it useful that I take this build number and pass it to the next build so that I can identify this build number and I just append the internal build number for this task. So I have Im the information on this task, which build number it was. And also, uh, this build number, I also pass, uh, I don't know if we can see, okay, um, in, in, in one previous slide I, sh I showed the App Store command and uh, in the App Store command I have two parameters and with one parameter I pass this version number. So when I open the app in the, uh, that I, when I install the app and open it and go to the settings, I see this version number. So build servers. What build servers are out there that you can use with for pipelines? Uh, I use Go from ThoughtWorks. All the screenshots were from Go, but you can also use Jenkins. Jenkins has a workflow plugin which does also this this, this pipeline where you can interconnect the tasks. Uh, I've also looked up TeamCity and Bamboo, and also with these two, you can interconnect the jobs so that they are dependent from one another. But I have no experience with the with, with the last two. So the question is: Okay, now we have we have uh, we we know we how we, how we build our software, and we know how 
to configure our, our build server, is that everything. In my case, there is one, one important part missing. This is automated testing. It, it is important if you want to deliver your app in a good state that you can also verify that this is working. Okay, if you have lots of money and lots of manual testers, then you can test this always manually. But uh, I want a system where I press the button and I, I, I get a, ver a working version. In my case, I also started uh, uh, in mobile development and only do, did a few tests. And over the time, uh, as the project grows, the problems, uh, problem list got larger and larger prior to release. And uh, the list, uh, I got about so 30, 20 to 30 items from the testers, what is wrong with this version. And I started, really started with uh, automated tests with unit tests. And uh, it took about a half a year um, before I, bef before this started to work because the list grew shorter and shorter with the, with the issues. Also, um, a, a nice story about this is uh, about the last release of uh, one of my greater applications. Um, in the mo uh, it, well, it was a Friday morning, the customer called and, saw and, and said to me, okay, we want to do an App Store release and we want to do it today. And until this day, the new features and fixes for the application was, were not tested manually through a tester. I had only automated tests. And I think it was uh, two, um, two uh, o'clock in the uh, uh, after midday, uh, where I received a phone call from the customer which, and he said, okay, the application is fine. We have found some issues, but they are only minor issues and you can release it. Therefore, I've released an application that was purely automated tested. And automated tested means I have a code coverage of, from, of about 70% in my code. So I, I could say, okay, I'm there. So automated tested is really, really one big topic. And here I want to list a few tools. Uh, the list is not complete. Uh, complete. I, for example, I, for myself, do only unit tests, but you can also s use such tools as Calabash and so on. But I found for me that uh, unit tests are enough, but I also do UI tests with unit tests. So I do complicated stuff, but unit testing is a, is a great, great, great other matter. And I think uh, you can feel multiple talks with this. So that's it. It's an overview how to do continuous uh, delivery on mobile projects and uh, much should also uh, be valid for uh, other projects. And if you have questions, you can ask me now or you can uh, drop me an email and so on. This, you find the slides on my homepage or I will send it to the uh, conference guys. Yeah, that's it. Thank you for your attention.